Hi, I'm Captain Cephas McRae and welcome to another presentation in the Back to the Basics series. In this program, we'll help you improve your boating skills and provide you with valuable information on a variety of boating topics. Now notice that I said we and not just me. The Back to the Basics team has acquired the participation of skilled owner operators, professional captains and marine experts who with combined decades of knowledge will help you to become a better and safer boater. Docking a twin engine boat can be easier in some respects than docking a single engine boat. Now, with the exception that twin engine boats are typically larger than single engine runabouts, for instance, and therefore have more mass for the engines to move, with a little practice you can actually maneuver them in very tight spaces and virtually turn them on a dime. Now, with twin engines, whether they're inboards or outboards, Probably the most intimidating maneuver for many novice skippers is backing into a slip. Now as mentioned before, remember that neutral is your friend. And boats have no brakes, so you must use reverse thrust to slow your forward motion. So take it slow, and before you enter the docking area, get a feel for the wind direction and the wind speed, and also the direction of the current if there's any. You may have to compensate for both as you enter the slip. Now, by the way, this also applies in a similar fashion to loading your boat on a trailer. The wind and the current can carry you diagonally away from the trailer, so you must compensate when you're making your approach to load on. Now, as you enter the dock area, maintain just enough forward motion to control your boat. In and out of gear is the key here. In this case, we'll be bringing the stern around to starboard and swinging the bow to port to back into the slip. Now as you approach the slip and your bow goes just past the slip opening, apply a little reverse throttle to stop your forward motion. Next, apply slight forward throttle with the starboard engine and slight reverse throttle with the port engine to begin your turn. Now in most cases, you shouldn't ever have to even touch the wheel. As the stern comes around, you can apply slight reverse thrust to the starboard engine to straighten the boat up and stop your turning. Now the boat should back right into the slip, and as the stern nears the dock, apply slight forward throttle to both engines to stop the boat and then into neutral. Pretty simple, huh? Now remember, practice on a calm day when there's little traffic, and put out some fenders and have a buddy go along to help you, and you'll be an expert in no time. Now for twin inboards, the process is much the same, and in this case, we'll dock the boat beam two. So if you can get out on a weekday, a not, not too busy day, with a professional once or twice, maybe three times, uh, no wind, it's calm, it's not too hard. What I like to do is just look at the wind, position the boat, and watch the way the wind blows. Watch the current. Uh, neutral's your friend. A lot of times we just try to point the nose of the boat, the bow of the boat, into the wind, which will uh, protect you. I normally try to just bump it in forward and then back to neutral. Bump it in forward, maybe count to three, count to four, back to neutral. And a lot of times we'll just let the wind and the current carry us back to the dock. Boats don't have brakes, so the idea is go slow. Try to go as slow as, as well as you can keep steerage as you can. And just neutral, forward, let the wind carry you, let the current carry you in, back to neutral. You don't really need gas at all. All you need to do is use the gears. Right now, as you can see, the wind is holding us steady, and it's just carrying us in, 
I don't have any gear, I don't have any throttle. We're just letting the current and the wind carry us into the dock. A lot of times you want to watch out. We're on a non-busy day today, but you want to watch out for other people. You have to have proper courtesy. You don't want to dilly-dally around on the gas dock a lot either. You want to get your business done and get gone so the next person can come in. Have uh, fenders out. Get your crew people ready. Get some dock lines ready. And then just real gently just touch, touch base. And we're there. No shouting, no yelling, no problem. As for navigation, chart plotters are probably one of the best inventions since sliced bread. And if you weren't good at math, then they'll do the charting calculations for you. Chart plotters tell you where you are and they show your position in latitude and longitude. Now the big benefit of these machines is that they show the aids to navigation, water depths, and obstructions to help you navigate safely. And depending on the brand of unit you have and the chart chip you're using, there may be more or less features on the chart. Anything from tidal rise and fall to marina locations and services. But as with any electronic device, they can have problems for one reason or another. And you should never count on a chart plotter as your only means of navigation. Always have a current chart of the waters you're boating in and learn how to read them. And learn how to determine your position on the chart. Now a good place to learn the basics of chart reading is to take a Power Squadron safe boating course or pick up a copy of Chapman's Piloting, Seamanship, and Small Boat Handling.